part of the design piece. So it's about encoding media and distributing it to your platforms because you can have media networked out. Um, I think it's called HippoNet out to the other 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 devices. Um, in, in, you know, in, input manipulation, and then we've got the, the environment piece that we talked about. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at pre prepare now, which um, the other two stages really prepare and deliver. So Susie's going to take us through prepare, and it's about visualization, it's about programming sequences, uh, and and also you know some control elements as well. So can I hand it over to you, Susie? Yeah. So. There we go, should be able to see it now. Got it. Cool, so basically, as Mark's just said, um, we've kind of gone through the output. So we thought about our show, we thought about what we might wanna create and how we're gonna create it. So now we've got a rough idea of what we wanna output to um, and how we might um, do it. Obviously this can change because you, know, you can change your outputs and it doesn't affect your programming. Uh, but I think it's always good to kind of understand what you can output to um, and how you might want to do it. So, you know, you can then kind of think about your workflow and think about how you're going to achieve um, what you want to achieve. So hopefully uh, you've all managed to kind of have a think about, oh, in my show, I could do it like this or I could do it like that. Um, I know there's a lot of different people here today, so there'll, there'll be a lot of uh, different ways of thinking, I think. So don't forget, um, if at any time you've got any questions, uh, just type them in that chat box um, and then we can kind of answer them. Or of course, you can wait till the end and ask them then. But more than happy to answer them uh, halfway through as well. So um, we've kind of gone through the outputs, that's good. Uh, and now we're gonna kind of have a look at the four kind of major workflows, I would say, um, within Hypotizer. Um, of course, it's all modular, it's all flexible. Um, there's probably a million more as well, uh, but these are kind of the four um, main ones. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is actually the kind of the manual way of doing it. So this is just kind of using the uh, using the software here and working out how you want to do it. Um, and then we're going to show you how to record some presets. So this here is the mixes page. Um, and I know it might look a bit scary and a bit confusing to start with. Um, and I know Mark always freaks out when he gets to look at this. Um, but um, it's actually really very simple. So at the top, we have our layers. OK. Um, and our layers go with number one at the bottom and number four on top, okay? So imagine you've got uh, pieces of paper, four pieces of paper, number one is at the bottom and then all the rest are on top. So if they're out of the way, if they're at zero, you'll be able to see what's on number one. At the bottom here, we've got content, okay? So we can just select a content. This is all the stock content um, that we were talking about earlier. Uh, and then we can just drag up the level um, and you should be able to see so here is our output down here. Um, so you can see now that it's outputting. So as we choose different content, it changes on our output. So it's easy as that. So that's that bit. Here we've got our media player. Um, and this obviously for all your transport controls and all of that um, things here. So this is, we can see what's playing in our media. Uh, this section here is the geometry. So we can just click and move it around. Uh, zoom in, zoom out, rotate it, um, all of the, the things there. Uh, we have crossfade, so we can select a crossfade. And when we select a different clip now, it will just fade in. So this again, this is designed kind of if you're running it manually, we've got a crossfade, which just means you can just easily go, okay, next clip, fine. We're gonna just go to the next one. Uh, here we've got all of the color controls. So let's say that um, we're running this clip. Um, and this clip's quite, well, it's different colors. But let's say that we wanted it only green because all the lighting's gone green. Oh, sorry, red. So it's now red. Um, if you wanted it green, just pull out the red. And now it's green. So we can really then match it in um, to what uh, other departments are doing. Um, and it just really allows you to manipulate um, that content just there. And finally here, we've got all of the effects. So it has a lot of built-in effects that you can use. Um, so you can just kind of click one, it's going to add noise to it. And you can choose how much or how little, the frequency, and then how big uh, the grains are. So there's a multiple different effects there. Um, and then we also have a notch as well here. Um, so you can load different notch blocks 
Um, and depending on your server will depend on um, which license you've got on your system um, and whether it can load from plain notch blocks. So that's kind of the very, very, very basics of the mixes page. Obviously, if you want to learn more, um, drop us a message and we can sort you out with Hippo School online or um, we can just explain it in a little bit more detail. So once you've kind of got your uh, mix, we can create a look. So let's say we want to have it red. Maybe we choose this one. Okay, and with that we want that red. Uh, and maybe we want to add an effect to it. Um, so let's add this effect. Um, so there we go, we've got our clip. Um, if we just pretend it's the best clip in the world, um, we can then record it as a preset. So if I hit all, uh, this will just record all of my attributes. So my level, the media player, the geometry, the color, the effects, and then hit record and drop it in here. Can then give it a name. Um, so that, that will now, so if we now reset it, every time we press this, it will just bring it straight back again, um, exactly um, as it was. So let's say we had a different preset, so maybe we have uh, a different clip. Uh, maybe we use a different effect. So maybe we have this effect. Uh, and then maybe you have it normal colors, for instance. So let's say we want to make this into a preset again, hit record. And now what we can do is actually fade between the presets as well. So we're going to set a crossfade between the two. And then what it'll do is it'll just crossfade between. So we can actually program our show with presets and then just easily and quickly um, crossfade between them. So that's kind of like the manual way of doing it. Um, you can either just do it with the mouse or you can just program some presets and just switch between your presets. Um, you can have up to 255 presets in a bank uh, and then there's 255 banks. So I don't think you'll be running out of preset slots anytime soon. Um, if you programmed it for a certain layer, it doesn't matter. We can also just put it onto um, layer three or whichever layer, it doesn't matter. This is just kind of remembering the parameters um, for each section. So that's one way of doing it. That's kind of the, uh, the manual way just there. Um, the next way we have is the timeline, okay? So this is our new timeline just here. So in the middle, we have our visualizer, okay? Um, at the bottom here, we have our edit uh, and our timeline list um, just here. So if we wanted to put a model into our visualizer, so we'll come into the visualizer. Um, and if we just load in a model, import a model, here we have all of the different um, options at the moment. So if I choose the TV studio, here we have our um, TV studio model. Um, so if we just map it in here to mix one, map them all to mix one, just so you can see. So now you can see that our output um, is playing on all of our screens. Um, of course, if we have more mixes, you will see on here, different mixes that are playing.